Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Eric Dorland, uh, and this is DNS Transport Security in Debian. Um, we're going to go over uh, a bit about how the current set of protocols, or what the current set of protocols are, um, a number of uh, DNS server providers that exist that probably didn't exist a year ago um, that you can use with these protocols. And then just a very quick overview of how to configure this for your Debian box. Um, so just a little bit about who I am. Um, I've been a Debian developer since 2001, I think. Something about like that, that's a while ago. Um, I work in New York uh, as an SRE for Google, but I don't work on DNS. Um, I don't work on any of this DNS stuff except for packaging uh, DNS script proxy, which I'll talk a bit about later. Um, so yeah, with that, setting the expectations really low, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> so why would you want to encrypt your DNS traffic? Um, in certain jurisdictions, particularly in the United States, it's possible, it's, it is um, legal for ISPs to collect your web browsing history and sell it to other companies. Um, the, obviously, the widespread adoption of HTTPS has helped make it harder for companies to sniff um, your web browsing traffic, or your web browsing uh, history, but uh, DNS requests can still leak the sites that you're going to visit. Um, and obviously, encrypting your requests and responses can prevent this kind of collection. And it also helps thwart sort of mass surveillance tooling that uh, governments have deployed that we know of. Um, but of course, this doesn't, this is just sort of a, this helps, it doesn't solve the whole problem, or it, do, it doesn't prevent um, um, someone sniffing your traffic from knowing where your packets are going, and you would need to use something like Tor to get that level of anonymity. But if you can um, obscure your DNS requests, that does help. Um, so just a quick word about DNSSEC. DNSSEC is a very nice tool and protocol. Um, DNSSEC provides integrity of your DNS responses, um, and it provides a chain of trust so that you can sort of reason about uh, you know that the the lo the root zone can sign the com zone and then can sign the com zone can sign your zone and you can get this sort of trust established um, so that you know that someone can't interfere with a signed DNSSEC zone. Um, but that being said, DNSSEC doesn't provide privacy. All of the requests that happen with DNSSEC are in the clear. You can still look at them. You can't um, fiddle with them. Uh, without being detected, but they're still available for someone to look at. So um, what I'm going to be talking about is sort of the privacy aspect where you encrypt the traffic so that it can't be observed either. Um, so DNSSEC is great, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Um, so quickly going over the protocols. Um, so this is the, we're in the standard sort of protocol space here where there are a number of standards. Um, it's not quite up to 15, but give it some time. Um, <clears throat> the first protocol we're going to talk about is called DNS Crypt. Um, it was established around 2011, um, but it was it's sort of a it was there's a there's a written implementation there's like a written protocol document, but there has been no standardization of it. Um, it was initially developed. Uh, for the company that ran OpenDNS, um, and they still, they're able to support, they can, you can use this protocol with their resolvers. Um, there's no real, they don't use the classic sort of certificate authority chain of trust model. It's usually you have to manually sort of, or statically configure the fingerprint for um, your resolver so that you can trust it. Um, and the protocol is just, it's very, it's just really just embeds DNS requests inside of a encrypted uh, packet. It's very custom. Uh, the next protocol that is actually standardized is DNS over TLS. Um, it's in these two RFCs. 
Um, this is TLS in the same way that HTTPS uses TLS. So you've got the regular sort of CA chain of trust uh, for authenticating the resolver. Um, it runs over port 853. Um, and there is also a DNS over DTLS, which is the sort of datagram version, the UDP version of TLS um, in RFC uh, 8094. But I, don't, I couldn't find any actual real implementations of this. Um, so it doesn't seem to be very popular. Most people are just doing the DNS over TLS. <coughs> and then finally, um, there's DNS. This is a newer standard, DNS over HTTPS, uh, or DOE. Um, in a lot of places, the internet really just means that you can talk over port 443. So having a protocol to run DNS over port 443 is a little bit helpful in that, in that, uh, in that sense. Um, there's a number of like HTTP-centric security features that could potentially be leveraged for this, like certificate pinning or key pinning, HSTS, those sorts of things. You could actually do that. Um, and obviously with HTTP version 2, you've got better multiplexing and head-of-line blocking prevention or, or, or sort of fixes in the protocol to do better uh, head-of-line blocking so you don't have to worry so much about um, poor performance with, that you might get with uh, HTTP 1.1. Um, and I think most interesting, uh, there's in, in this, uh, so the standard is still in draft, and I'll get to that in a second, but the there's a provision for using HTTP2 server push, where you, the server, a, a, a DOS server could actually push you DNS responses for things you hadn't asked for yet, because maybe it knew that uh, people who, you know, statistically, if you request domain A, it means within five seconds you're going to request domain B. Uh, so it might just push that response to you instead of waiting for you to request it. Sort of interesting. I don't think anyone is actually doing that, but it's available in the standard. Um, but unfortunately, DNS over HTTPS, is, there's actually two different protocols. Uh, the original one, which was developed by Google, uh, that it's, is actually encoded in JSON, um, and it's also over HTTP 1.1. Um, and then there's the newer uh, IETF draft that is over HTTP 2, um, and it uses the regular DNS format. And I don't think anyone other than Google supports the original one. Um, but that one did come out two or three years ago at least. Uh, so it was a sort of earlier implementation of this idea. So those are the, like, the main protocols for doing this. Uh, so now I'm just going to talk about the different server providers that exist out there. Um, so earlier this year, Cloudflare announced their very uh, probably best IP address 1.1.1.1 uh, resolver. Um, it was on April 1st that they announced this, which was great. It's always a good time when people announce actual products on April Fools. Um, <clears throat> they support uh, both DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS. Um, and they have, uh, so it's sort of like, documented their logging policy here. Uh, I've obviously condensed a several page document into three bullet points. So if you're very interested, you should probably actually read it. But um, from what I could tell, they promise to keep, they'll keep full logs for 24 hours. And then they will aggregate and anonymize those logs and keep them indefinitely. Um, and they also share some amount of anonymized data with APNIC uh, for some research project that they're doing. So that's not bad. Uh, at least as far as logging policies go. Um, and they definitely have the best IP address. They've sort of won that arms race of coolest IP address. I don't know if, if anyone could actually beat them at this point. <coughs> um, and then uh, there's uh, Google Public DNS. This was sort of the first, I guess, big provider that was providing a DNS resolver for the public um, back in 20, uh, 2009. Um, and it's the classic 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. um, and there's also, I, I should have mentioned before, the, the, everyone has uh, IPv6 versions of these things as well, although if you can see from Cloudflare and Google, they're much harder to remember. 
a bit longer. Um, so Google supports uh, D uh, Doe DNS over HTTPS. Um, it supports the original, it's a, the original protocol that it developed that, that uses JSON at that URL. And there's this experimental URL where you can use the newer HTTP2 DNS wire protocol. Um, obviously, the, having experimental in that name, I would not rely on it for uh, a production workload or anything, but uh, it's there to play with. Um, they don't support DNS over TLS. Um, and their logging policy is relatively similar. Um, they keep full logs for 24 to 48 hours. Um, they keep partially anonymized logs for two weeks uh, where they've stripped out the IP address, uh, but there's some metro level information that's been retained. And then they take some sample that is also kept indefinitely. Um, but they also point out that they will never combine the data they get from pub Google Public DNS with any other logging data that they may have. Um, and then finally, there is uh, this resolver that was uh, this project that was released called Quad9 uh, back, I think, in November of last year. I didn't actually put it in the slides. Um, but it is uh, a partnership between IBM, the Packet Clearinghouse, and the Global Cyber Alliance. Um, I, don't, I don't remember this getting a lot of press when it came out. Um, obviously, they've got a pretty cool 9.9.9.9, .9 although their second IP address is very different for some reason. Um, but if you look very carefully, their, their IPv6 addresses are incredibly memorable. They're much shorter than everybody else, so they're definitely winning on the uh, memorable IPv6 addresses. Um, <clears throat> the other thing about this resolver, um, they promised to block DNS lookups to malicious domains. I didn't look very hard into what they consider malicious, but they have some sort of blacklist um, that they will use. They also don't send, they don't forward the eDNS client subnet option. Um, this is an option in newer DNS that um, is used by like CDNs where the resolver will send the, like the, the subnet of the requester to the authoritative server so they can do some sort of like load balancing potentially or give you, give you an address that's closer to you potentially. Um, but obviously, this leaks a bit more information about who you are or where you're coming from. So um, these guys uh, strip that out. So that's a little bit of a, you may get worse performance or you may get worse behavior from certain service providers, but maybe uh, a better privacy trade-off. Um, and they actually have, they have a, a, a different set of endpoints that are very similar that don't do these, bullet, uh, these DNS blacklists. And it does forward the eDNS uh, client subnet. Um, and their logging policy says something like, it claims it never logs the IP addresses to disk, which I'm a little dubious that that could possibly be true, um, and that they will keep anonymized logs indefinitely. So um, those are, the, I think, the big ones. Um, there's a number of other server providers that you can get that will do encrypted DNS. Um, there's a comprehensive list at this URL. Um, most of these other providers don't use AnyCast, so they don't have this very cool single IP address that works from anywhere in the world uh, that you get with AnyCast. Um, so you have to be more, a little more careful about choosing a server that is sort of network close to you or physically proximate to you. Otherwise, performance will be pretty poor. Um, <coughs> The other, the, the other thing is the smaller providers may provide somewhat less protection due to there is less traffic coming out of them on the other side to hide in. Um, the, uh, for all of these, for almost everyone here, the, the, the request to the authoritative, like you, you request to uh, Cloudflare's resolver and that's encrypted, but then they'll go and do the lookup to the authoritative servers and right now that is not encrypted. So if, you have, if you're using a resolver that doesn't get a lot of traffic, it's, you're losing a lot of the anonymity because if, if, the, if your attacker can observe the resolver, they can just see what your requests are because you're the only one using it or there's very few people using it. So it can be a little bit tricky to make that decision. Um, but if you don't want to trust one of these larger providers, 
obviously there's a bunch of different options. There's, the list is probably about 60, 80 different servers that you can use. Um, and uh, the other option you can do is you could you can use multiple different providers. Um, I know DNS Crypt Proxy, which I'll get to in a second, um, can sort of round robin between different providers, so no single provider. If you do that, no single provider could see all of your DNS queries as well, uh, which might pr provide you some additional protection. So I'm going to go pretty fast here. Um, to turn this on in Debian, uh, there's a few options. One is Unbound. Unbound is a resolving, uh, it's a re resolving DNS server. It's pretty popular. Um, it supports DNS over TLS uh, when forwarding, but it doesn't support uh, DNS over HTTP. Um, and it actually sort of supports DNS crypt, but not on the forwarding side, just on the client side, which is probably pretty useless, but um, it's there if you somehow wanted it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so to set up Unbound, you would just apt-get install it, um, and then to sort of, I've used the example here with Cloudflare, but you can obviously pop in any addresses that you wanted, and you would just have to put a little config snippet into uh, the unbound conf.d directory there and reload unbound. Um, so DNS crypt proxy is another option. Uh, this is the package that I maintain. Um, it's the only one I think that supports all three of these protocols. It does DNS crypt, DNS over TLS, and DNS over HTTPS. Um, it used to only support DNS crypt, but there's been a recent 2.0 upgrade uh, where the whole thing's been rewritten in Go. It was pretty hard to actually finish packaging it. Uh, I just did a good upload of it this morning, so ho hopefully all of this does still work. Um, and you can just use it by, if you, app, if you app can install DNS script proxy and resolve conf, it will automatically make that your local DNS uh, resolver. Um, and it uses Cloud, I've got it configured to use Cloudflare out of the box, but you can use it with, uh, you can obviously change the configuration. <clears throat> and now, um, I don't know if everyone's aware of this, but Systemd also has a sort of stub resolver that can forward uh, DNS requests. It's to do have, also have like a local DNS cache. Um, Systemd resolve D, it's called, and it now has support for DNS over TLS as of Systemd. Uh, 239. Um, it's disabled by default. If you add that little line there and configure it to use uh, one of those providers that has DNS over TLS, you can get it to uh, encrypt their traffic as well. Um, they claim that it will likely be turned on in a future, like turned on by default in a future release, so you won't even have to do that much. Um, I think last but not least, um, so Firefox announced recently that they're going to start supporting uh, DNS over HTTPS directly in Firefox uh, 62. Um, and there's some instructions on how to set that up. Uh, Firefox 62, I think, is the current developer, it's currently a developer release, and they're going to do a full release in September. So it'll be the next version of Firefox to come out. Um, and they're, they also claim that they're going to enable this by default. Uh, and, and by default, they use, it's configured to use Cloudflare, but you can change that in the configuration options there. Um, there's a few other tools in Debian that support this. For the interest of time, I'm going to keep going. Um, and so, after you, if you remember, if you, if you uh, start to configure this and you run into a problem, just remember this following mantra. It's not DNS. There's no way it's DNS. It was DNS. <laughs> um, so, in conclusion, uh, just a couple other links that are pretty interesting. When I was doing research for this, I came across the dnsprivacy.org. Um, they're building a bunch of tools and have a lot of good documentation about how uh, to encrypt DNS. Um, and it, they seem to have a goal of sort of advancing the state of the art of uh, DNS privacy. Um, there's also this really interesting paper called Oblivious DNS, um, where it's sort of, it's kind of similar to Tor a little bit, where you have this like oblivious DNS server in the middle and you, do like a special, you, like in, you do a DNS request to your normal resolver um, that is encrypted, and then that gets forwarded to the oblivious DNS server, which then goes and asks the actual authoritative server, and it means that the resolver and the authoritative server don't, can't see what the original request was or where it came from, and don't know the, and the resolver doesn't actually know what you asked for. 
So it's a pretty cool paper. Uh, didn't have enough time to go into it, but it seems pretty interesting. Um, so just to summarize, I think what's probably going to end up happening, um, the DNS over HTTPS is still a draft standard, but I suspect it's going to get standardized. Um, Firefox will turn on by default. System D is also going to be turning on DNS over TLS by default. Uh, the DNS script protocol is probably dead. I don't see anyone really going forward with that protocol, even though it was the first one in this space. Um, the Oblivious DNS stuff may become interesting, but I don't think there's actually an implementation of it yet. Um, so that'd be cool. And I think most last mile ISPs are not going to offer any of these features. Uh, you know, your Verizons and your Comcast probably won't do this. And that's my presentation. Thanks, everybody. Any questions? Please uh, come up to the mic. Hi. Uh, is uh, anybody uh, trying to get uh, ISPs to adopt it, or uh, is uh, everybody happy uh, that we now depend on Cloudflare for DNS? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know that everyone's happy about that, it's obviously. Uh, um, but uh, I, uh, I haven't seen anything like that. Uh, yeah, if anyone knows, I, I've, I've not seen any real effort to try to convince uh, normal ISPs to implement encrypted DNS. It would be cool, it would be great, but I, I, you know, a lot of times they, it's, it's, if there's not a direct monetary incentive to do it, then they're probably happy that they don't have to run DNS servers. Any other questions? I think we're all basically out of time. All right, thanks very much. <laughs>